looking real good. What have you, what have you been doing since you got out of the hospital to take care of yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Almost nothing. Almost nothing. Yeah. Well, great. <laughs> well, listen, we've been hearing a lot about this uh, 20th anniversary video, and uh, now that the Grateful Dead are working in their uh, 22nd year, when do you think we'll see this video? Well, it's not doesn't have anything to do with the 20th anniversary anymore. <laughs> I mean, you know, it did during the, that first year that we were working on it. But now it's, uh, uh, we're going to LA tomorrow to mix the soundtrack. The soundtrack is like, it's like about a 50 minute show. And the soundtrack is like one continuous piece of music, like a cartoon, like a, you know, mm -hmm. we're doing it that way. And then we, ha the picture that we have is mostly live stuff from, uh, well, I guess you can't really call it live, or maybe it's, at any rate, live at Marin Vets. That's right. Without Partly an audience. live at Marin Vets, right? Without an audience, and and some little bits from New Year's uh, last. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anyway, the the first stage and and the the real completion of it, honest to God, no kidding, is this thing of assembling the soundtrack, which is happening, or actually being mixed tomorrow. So that the music is all mixed in in its various parts. And now it's all laid together in its, the proper relationships. And then this next part has to do with ending up with uh, a stereo track that's the whole show beginning to end, mm -hmm. as far as the music is concerned. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing that happens is that uh, Len and uh, Delamico and I uh, go around to these places we've been poking around in for the last two years in the Bay Area, mostly little video places and uh, places with hardware, places with magic boxes mm -hmm. and um, we fool around so this is the uh, the secret special effects that I've heard about well they're not really all that secret they're they're uh, well it remains to be seen mm -hmm. you know, but we have some interesting ideas we'll see what happens mm -hmm. okay well let's see um, how the uh, maybe oh well, let me finish that Oh, okay yeah okay well, and when it's gonna be done we hope to have it done by the end of this month or maybe the end of uh, November. And so that it's not likely that we'll get it out by Christmas. We may get it out after the first of the year. Mm -hmm. Surely, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, gee, as long as we're talking about uh, the video project that sure we will. <laughs> <laughs> Honest, man, really. Yeah, uh, Robert Hunter has said he was looking forward to having some musical conversations with you. That he, he is. That he had some new songs in his head. Very true. Um, have the two of you gotten together yet? Not yet, but he left me uh, a small bale of material before <laughs> he went out on the road. Uh -huh. uh, most of which I haven't gone, actually not that mean, like about four songs that he feels are done. I mean, the lyric, lyrically, they're done. Mm -hmm. um, but really, there's some older pieces that I have. Hunter is way ahead of me. You know, he's like 10 years ahead of me, minimum, mm -hmm. in terms of his output versus mine. You know, so <clears throat> so uh, there's possibly four things I've been going over and over and over and over, uh, hoping to have, uh, you know, get maybe one or two good ideas. But I see the possibility for about maybe four, three or four new songs. When they happen, they happen in little bunches like that. Mm -hmm. So there, it's th these are about to happen. Is there any chance that we might see these in December? Or hear these in December? Yes, there's a good chance, yeah. Okay. Good yeah. chance. Great. Uh, do the Dead plan on recording a new album soon? Well, yes, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> and will it Actually, it's not a new album. It's the album that we theoretically started oh, four years ago or something uh, like that. It's, uh, Did it's... Did any of those tracks? The, the new songs stuff? you're talking about? The fantasy stuff? No. Oh. No. No, we're going... Well, here's our plan. Our plan is essentially this. We're going into Marin Vets again in January with no audience and, and using it as a studio. It, it, it turns out to be an incredibly nice room to record in. And there's something about the just the formal atmosphere there that makes us work when... Uh, when we set up at Front Street to work, a lot of times we just sort of dissolve into hanging out. You know? Yeah. And uh, our records work out well if provided we rehearse and and actually make it make it happen. You know. But it since we don't uh, tell each other what to do, it uh, 
it makes it hard for us to produce our own records because we don't like to tell each other what to do. Right. So that means that we have to cop a certain kind of attitude to do it. But we got we we had a uh, the thing of going in there without an audience and playing just to ourselves was in the nature of an experiment just to see if is there some kind of situation that that, that isn't performing live that where we can get off. And we got off. We got right. off a few times, you know, and, and uh, so it's possible that we can get maybe get some tracks that have some punch. Mm -hmm. um, these things are are subjective, you know, so it's it's hard to talk in any kind of uh, real terms. But our plan is that we're going in there in January, and that if we if we work hard and uh, have some clear sense of what it is that we're trying to accomplish as far as the songs are concerned, we may be finished by. Uh, the end of February, we were sort of planning on that period of time to work on the record, and uh, that could happen. It could we've happen. done it before. Yeah, yes. we've, we've done. Uh, we've delivered. If we create a deadline for ourselves, we may be ac actually deliver a record oh, within great. a certain space of time. Of course, on the other hand, and then, <laughs> and then of course, this will be the big album, right? Well, this will be our last album for Arista, <laughs> theoretically. Uh -huh. We owe them this. So this is the record that takes us out of the music business. And then you can go on your own, <clears throat> maybe, or or we can do so, or we can at least be open to something else or something. But we won't. We don't have the thing of having a record that we have to deliver to somebody at some hypothetical point in the future, thus tying up our ability to make decisions. Mm -hmm. Get it? Yeah, I got it. Brilliant. <laughs> well, that brings us up to the grateful. That brings us up hey. to the fact that the Grateful Dead are re-releasing some of the out of print albums on CD, cassettes, and records. Uh, yeah. Which ones will these be that are going to be released? Uh, so far, I think, um, let me see. And these are on actual Grateful Dead records. They're yeah. Uh, so far, I think that Kid's working on, uh, let's see, um, um, I know, I Blues, know for Allah. Blues for Allah. Blues for Allah. I think maybe uh, Wake of the Flood. Uh -huh. And I think in the future, is plan, uh, we keep, he plans on putting out my first solo album, An Ace. Bobby's first album. Yeah, I think Ace is pretty much. They're it. both nice albums. Are there any others that you could think of? Are there, are there any like albums on uh, Warner Brothers that you would like to come out on CD? Because none are out on CD right now. Sure, Working Man's Dead, um, American Beauty. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. they would sound nice. They would, especially uh, American Beauty, which is very nicely recorded. Uh, it ha it has a lot of the kind of stuff that CD likes. It has a lot of. Uh, textural stuff and acoustic instruments and that sort of thing and it's, it's really not it, it, it has a very sweet sound mm -hmm. and CDs the 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 addition of that uh, uh, compact disc silence you know re really benefits those performances I think mm -hmm. I would love to be able to remix everything we've ever done and do the vocals over and do everything <laughs> over and uh, I don't want to get too involved in these oh, you projects. Mean, you mean because in essence, that. like maybe re-record some of your old songs, like the the police just did. They just released well. The a thing new is, the temptation is always there. You know, when you yeah. go back to the day and say, "Geez, why did we do that? We could have done something." You know, I mean, it's it, but it's one of those things. It's like going into a museum and painting over a painting. You know, adding yeah. something. You know, it's it. Uh, There's yeah. always something that you could add. That's right. And it's, uh, at this point, I'm more interested in what you know, what new there is. You could paint the same bridge. Oh yeah, there's nothing. No, no, I have no, I have no no problem with the idea of different performances. It's the thing of going back to a performance that already exists. You know what I mean? If you no, change I any little thing, I mean, it, it's disturbing. It really is. It's you're listening for something, and if the even if the mix changes, it makes it a little strange. Well, as I, um, how do you feel about people taping Grateful Dead concerts and trading the tapes? I, it's hey, when I'm done with it, it's you know. It's there. <laughs> yeah, right. If somebody can find a use for music after it's been performed, fine with me. You know, I, I, uh, I used to be a, a, a bluegrass music freak, and I spent a lot of time taping bands, and I loved, I loved being able to do it, and I loved having the tapes afterwards, and being able to trade them around is just, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I think that's healthy stuff. That's okay with me, as long as the people who are doing the taping aren't obnoxious about it. Uh -huh. I mean, and that's, I, I have to view it from that point of view, because uh, at the worst, there's, uh, you know, uh, somebody will complain that there's too much uh, hassling for the best spots and that kind of stuff. You know, I saw, as far as I'm concerned, those those matters don't really happen to me experientially, but I hear about them. And when I, if I hear that somebody in the audience is unnecessarily rude or 
or competent attitude of some kind, or you know, it, it's. Uh, I don't, I don't want to be authoritarian about. It. I don't care, you know. Really, if uh, if everybody in the comes in packing high tech gear and you know what I mean, it's okay with me. It's the thing of uh, that everybody who's doing it should just be aware of everybody else who's there. That's all. Yeah. You know, something and, like that. and respect their space if too. possible. Sure. Yeah. Well, now we're in the video era. Uh, why should the line be drawn at audio? Why not allow video also? I haven't drawn it. I think that if the if the if the stuff is compact enough and it doesn't get in anybody's face and the people are are clever enough at sneaking it in or whatever, hey, it's fine with me. You know, well, I, it's, it's already it's, being done. I've seen some pretty yes, good handheld videos. I, yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. I know. I'm aware of that. It's uh, it's okay with me. Yeah. Uh, another uh, uh, question I have is uh, how about releasing CDs of choice live dead from the vault? I think it's a good possibility. That, that will happen sometime, but see the thing is that this is the kind of I mean I don't have the time to do this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I also don't have the inclination. I mean, there's every time I hear myself in the past, I I'm, I'm basically embarrassed. You know, it's like why did I do that? You know, I uh, I I have that kind of hang up going with my own performances, just like listening to your own voice on the tape recorder. You know, yeah, you don't want to be confronted with it. Really, it's uh, it's you already did it. It's over. You know, it's like anything that happened in the past. So it, for me, you know, I understand the value of it uh, to people who are really, really feel that they have to have these performances. And if they want them that badly, hey, that's just fine. It's just, the whole thing is farming this, this stuff out to people who are interested enough to do it. Mm -hmm. you know? And because I don't want to have to deal with it. Right. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Um, you can dig that, can't you? Sure about you can. the, uh, the, the Grateful Dead, Bob Dylan, Tom Petty tour that... Uh, yeah. We just finished. How did it go for you? What were the highlights? Well, I was dying. <laughs> uh, other, well, other, than, other than that. Other than that. <laughs> other than my decaying yeah. Yes, you're right. <laughs> the rest of it was pretty fun, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But, you know, hey, shit, I'm still a little mushy. You yeah. Know? I mean, uh -huh. I don't, I'm not really totally together. Well, would you like to take that a little further? Like, uh, for example, maybe have a dead Dylan concert where the dead are act actually back up Dylan for a whole yeah, set? Yeah, if we could get together and do and rehearse and stuff like that, that always makes me paranoid. Uh, I mean, I found myself in the weird position of teaching Dylan his own songs, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was interesting. This is yeah. really strange. <laughs> it was funny. He was great. He was so good about all this stuff. And we were doing, we were going to do, we were set, wanted to do Desolation Row with him. You know, he's got a million words. And uh, so Weir says, are you sure you'll remember all the words? Dylan says, I'll remember the important ones. <laughs> <laughs> he was really great. He really was. It was, it was fun to do it. It was fun to, it was uh, fun. Well, I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, right before he went on stage at the last show at RFK, he walked right out in the audience and started shaking hands. He said he wanted to check out the Deadheads, and he just walked right out in the audience. Well, I'm glad nobody hands. heard him. Uh, <laughs> and he had a great time. But the other thing that I noticed was when he, when Dylan and Petty came back here, their whole stage set had been redone ah. to have amplifier cases stacked up like the Grateful Dead. Oh, the whole set was I gone. They had people on so. stage. I swear, <laughs> I swear to it. It was hysterical. It Incredible. was a complete change. Yeah, well. That was great. Um, what about uh, next summer, stu uh, stadium dates? Uh, do you think hey, that might happen? I don't really like stadium dates. You know what I mean? If we, it's possible that sometimes uh, the demand requires that we do a couple of them. Mm -hmm. How about playing with CSNY? Well, this, that, that's what I was going to ask is, you know, we've got to. I don't know. It's... Uh, I don't know, you know, I really don't. I, I personally I like playing to our audience, you know what I mean? And I would just assume not subject anybody who doesn't want to be there, you know. And uh, CSN and why they they have a, they have a kind of a a different a different um, constituency than we do. You know, all the, our our fans like them fine, I think probably. Or maybe they don't, you know, I don't know. But the thing is that uh, more likely than Madonna so. Well, I, 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 there are a lot of there are a lot of musicians that I mean that are interesting that I think it would be great to have open for us, because for the musical value and and uh, and the thing of being exposed to a different audience and stuff. Our audience is is good. For other, I mean, for other acts, if they put out, man, the, the audience appreciates them. Yeah. What are you thinking of for New Year's Eve? Well, that's already lined up. I think we got the Neville Brothers again, uh -huh. and they're always fun. And I don't know about whether the, whether Mickey's going to come up with any of it. I think he's uh, coming up with something for probably. New Year's Eve itself. He always tries to. Because the Nevilles, I believe, are scheduled for all four shows. Yes, yeah. that's true. 
Well, uh, we, we've talked now with uh, on video with both Phil and Bob, and they both said that they expect some Those lying sons of bitches. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. You I wouldn't invite them to a dog show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, Jerry Garcia Band's going to be going solo for a while. <laughs> so, but they both said that they expect some changes in the Grateful Dead's concert format, um, like the, maybe... A, more improvisational stuff, changing songs around a little bit, maybe drums not necessarily occurring before space, and maybe then it's starting a show with drums or starting, starting with space. Now, how do you feel about that? Hey, whatever, you know. I mean, I, uh, it's, the Grateful Dead is, ha, is like a separate organism, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And um, there was a time when I used to be, uh, I used to worry about our arrangements and worry about... Uh, Minutia, you know, and but uh, the the experience of working with the Grateful Dead is like unlike anything else. It, it, nothing else is like it. No other music is like it. No other group of musicians is like it. And it just doesn't bear any comparison to anything else. So for me, uh, saying anything about anything that we're going to do ever is like I'm just bullshitting. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just lying I, because I I don't know. And one of the things that's great about the Grateful Dead is that the thing that I don't know. You know, that's that's the fun part. The it's fun when, part is it's always surprising. It's when you get up there, you find out, or not. Or you not. Know, I mean, uh, whole whole weeks have gone by when I didn't know what the hell was going on. But I mean, but you don't have a choice. Uh, you can't opt out. You know, you can't. Hey, fuck, man, I'm confused. I'm leaving. You know, mm -hmm. it's it, you know the thing to do is to stand there and slug it out. And uh, the Grateful Dead's music is successful on lots of different levels. Sometimes it's successful when, when we don't agree, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, when the band doesn't come to some understanding during the course of the evening, sometimes that music is extremely interesting. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. But sometimes when we're playing and thinking we're doing really great, it's terribly dull. You know, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that there is no way apart. For me, the experience is way too personal uh, to me, to, for me to make any kind of real honest generalizations about it, and certainly to predict anything is hopeless. Yeah, yeah. Um, are there any old Grateful Dead songs that you would like the Dead to start doing again? Nah, none. Not really. No. Can't think of any. Let's hear. I well, mean, unless somebody reminds me of something that I haven't thought of for a long time. Most of the most of the time, we do songs to death. You know, but I mean, like uh, Cream Puff War. I heard a, a old tape where you played it off. No, when. The, when a tune like that is, that's one of those tunes that's like so old, it's, it's totally embarrassing. I just, uh -huh. uh, everybody thing, forgot about it. And same thing with uh, Mason's Children, Violet Blues. Oh. Mason's Children was an almost song. It's, I guess it's got a famous underground reputation, but really it never quite uh, collected itself into a song. I never, never was that happy with the lyrics. Uh -huh. And uh, Violet Blues? No. Alligator? No. I don't think we could do Here that. Here comes sunshine. Um, I can imagine a situation in which we would do that song. We never did perform it. I mean, if we performed it, we performed it maybe twice, three yeah. times, something like I that. I saw Very it few once times. in Maryland. Yeah. yeah. Really? How many times would you? Well, uh, a couple dozen. <laughs> Come on, David Gans, you have not to very know. many though. I mean, we never we never played it to the point where it became one of our songs. We'll ask Dick. Know. We'll ask Dick Latvala. He'll know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. That's interesting because it, it's really sort of a, a, a consistent winner on tape. Oh well, it's so an e maybe it's one of those songs. It's like a formula song. song. It's an yeah. easy song to pull off. It might be a good song to do sometime. But there's lots of things that, uh, you know, I. Uh, I, I still think in terms of the songs that we do do of straightening them out, you know, getting I mean, them actually right. right, getting them right. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, okay, how about, uh, this is one for uh, Blair Jackson, The Golden Road. God, I don't, no, I don't think, no, I don't think we could do it. Right. Yeah, it, it belonged too much to that moment, that you know, yeah. yeah. Well, there's a, there's a very determined deadhead who for years has been running a Cosmic Charlie campaign. He has collected thousands of signatures on petitions and has encouraged thousands of deadheads to We've send a request it back to Eileen. Once, and it didn't work out too well. We brought it back once when Keith and Donna were in the band. Uh -huh. And we actually worked it out with harmony and every three-part harmony all the way through, and it sounded pretty neat. But the thing is that uh, uh, the regular groove part of Cosmic Charlie is an okay works, but, the, but 
Hunter and I were inexperienced songwriters when we wrote the songs. The song has some problematic, uh, it, it doesn't have any room to breathe, for one thing. And the other thing is that it has this intense, uh, these little bridges, you know, that they're two little melodic bridges in the course of the song that have words and everything, and they're, they, they're harmonically really complicated, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not easy. So the thing of trying to sing that song and actually play it at the same time is almost impossible. Now, like I say, we did bring it back, but it didn't work. It wasn't successful in the, the way that uh, it didn't have the, the, uh, the record has a certain, you know, it, it, it has a certain bigness to it, a kind of funky grandeur, you know, uh -huh. that uh, we, we haven't been able to capture it really in a concert yet. Someday, someday we might pull it off, but really it's, it's awful wordy. Yeah. Let's see, where, where else am I here? Do you have any favorite Grateful Dead concerts? No. No, you don't. The last one, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't remember much past the last one anyway. Yeah. And in fact, the last one now was so long ago, I don't even remember what, I mean, you know. For me, the Grateful Dead is a whole new experience now. Yeah. Uh, so, I have to see, really, you know. Uh, but I know it's hard for me to be attracted to the past. Like I say, it's, if I don't, stay on top of myself. I'm, I'm a lazy person and tend to not uh, practice unless I make myself do it and stuff like that. So if I don't, if I'm not critical of myself, I'll just, you know, I'll, if I'll eventually bore myself to death. Yeah. And I, it's just, I don't want to die that way. It, do you have a favorite facility to play in? Is there one that you like more than any other facility? I like the feeling in the Oakland Auditorium, although I don't know whether the sound is any good. I've never heard. I've never heard us anywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, you know, so I don't. I really don't know. I only know how they feel. Uh, Madison Square Garden is a great place to play because it's so juiced. Yeah. Right. And uh, the Bay Area also. You know it, but nowadays our audience is almost everywhere. Our our Grateful Dead audience is in there real good. Mm -hmm. And. Most places are, are at least acceptable sounding. There's only, if, actually, the easier question is, are there any places I really don't like to okay, play? Okay, are there any places you really don't like to play? Yeah, there's a couple of places <laughs> I really don't you, like to like play. Would you like to name them? I, I don't remember what they are. I only know that when we get into it, I go, oh, God damn it, we're in this place again. This place <laughs> sounds like shit. And, uh, you know, that's how, I mean, I don't try, I don't retain those memories, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm on to the next one as much uh -huh. as possible. It's, it's too hard to hold, like, I mean, when a place really sounds, I mean, really awful, you know, when you're competing with yourself coming from the back of the room, you know, and, uh, and the, everything is swimming and nobody knows what the fuck is happening, it's just like, you just want to forget that as quickly as possible, yeah. so that, you know, I'm, I've gotten to be pretty good at that, you know, at, at forgetting the bad ones, but, but there are like one or two or three places maybe in the United States that are just dreadful. Yeah, but we still play them. Right. But <laughs> but they but you go into them. I mean, and the sound is just like, what is it? You know, you know, it's it's really hard to understand what's happening. But you think about the possibility of doing, say, twenty two nights in a row, not in a row, but twenty two nights at uh, Marin Vets and for a live audience. Um, I like that. I like doing a run, and I like doing it uh, doing it at theaters too, because the music gains an intimacy that uh, you cannot get in a big room. You know, like when we were doing acoustic stuff and doing, when we, last time we did our runs, it was tremendously successful just in terms of what it did to the music, in terms of uh, detail. You know, so I love that shit. Yeah, I can do that forever, really. I'd be perfectly happy to do that for, until well, they take me away. Speaking of acoustic stuff, um, yeah. we saw a little taste of a videotape of the Grateful Dead rehearsing some acoustic on December 30th last year. Is there any chance of uh, acoustic December Grateful 30th. Dead soon? No, I don't think so. Um, it, it depends on how everybody feels about it. See, acoustic really just means that Bobby and I play acoustic guitars. Well, no, I saw Tim Sh T Timothy Sh uh, Schmidt last night with Don Henley at the Bridge yeah. concert, and he had a beautiful acoustic bass. You mean uh, a, like a bass guitar, a Bajo Sexto? Yeah, yeah Phil's got one wonder. of those, but he doesn't like it. Uh -huh. and, uh, and besides, he's a tasteful enough electric bass player that he can play and stay in balance with acoustic instruments. We don't have any problem playing. I mean, it's technically, it's no problem. But it's just the thing of, does everybody want to do it or not? You mm -hmm. know, and, and really, nobody's really ex that excited about doing it. I'd do it, because I like it. You know, but um, I wouldn't want to force everybody into it. Yeah. You know? um, you've, uh, you've made comments in the past about your stage fright, your legendary stage fright, as a matter of fact. Well, 
And uh, how did you feel about your October 4th club date at the Stone? Well, it was a long time since I played, so I felt, naturally, I felt uh, nervous, but but the Stone is really a familiar environment to me, too. That's one of the reasons why I decided I wanted to play there rather than someplace else. Mm -hmm. Because even there, the pressure is on. When it's on, the pressure is on. But uh, I, it, I wasn't particularly, I wasn't really terribly nervous. You know? mm -hmm. I've been much more, I think, uh, doing stuff with my band is easier for me than do it than the Grateful Dead. The Grateful Dead is a lot harder, and I'm I'm much more nervous about the Grateful Dead. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any special plans for the Halloween show? You're gonna come out in a nice costume? <laughs> Not on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I I you know who knows? But I. But it, it's fun to play with uh, with my band in a big room. It it has a very a real grand sound, and and, they, and nobody gets to hear us play that way around here very often. Yeah. And it really sounds, Melvin is so good. You know, yeah, know. Cool. Well, you know. You sold out in two days, 7,000 tickets in two days. I know. <laughs> oh, what <laughs> a nice for, person. For everybody behind the camera will see that. Okay. By the way, the, the show sold out, and all the people here at the ticket office didn't get any tickets. Can we get tickets from you? <laughs> hey, I don't have any tickets. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Where would I get them? <laughs> no tickets. Let's see. Do you believe in aliens? Well, no, I don't know whether I do or not. I don't. Uh, I don't believe in aliens in the sense that uh, there's something out there that lives that's not like everything that lives everywhere. Mm -hmm. If there's anything that lives anywhere, it's probably a lot like everything that lives. Yeah. Uh, probably. I mean, I, I don't know. It's a matter of conjecture. But I, I don't believe. For example, the things like. Uh, UFOs and stuff like that. I don't believe that stuff is alien. I, 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 my feeling is that that stuff is part of the environment, has always been, mm -hmm. and that it just, uh, it's just uh, uh, some kind of a, a carrot on the stick of, uh, in front of the mule of consciousness. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Something along those lines, maybe. I don't know. I, I keep changing my opinion about things, about all metaphysical stuff. You know, it's every couple of years I go through some new change that tells me, that, or that suggests that maybe everything I know is wrong, and that I have to update everything, and then, I, and then later I think, well, maybe not, you know. And, uh, but there's always new information coming in, so it's, for me it's an ongoing, this stuff is all ongoing discussion. I don't know whether, whether there's such a state as alien, even, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Now, um, getting into something here, one recent newspaper article, a review as a matter of fact of one of your club dates, the last club date, quoted a person close to the dead as hmm. saying, he danced as close to the edge as you can go and still get a return ticket. Was it really that serious, what went down? I don't know, man. I wasn't there, you know what I mean? I was out, you know, and, uh, but yeah, everybody says it was real serious. Uh, but, you know, what can you say about it? Any illness is serious, I guess. Any injury is serious. Anything, anytime you have, anytime you wake up in a hospital, something serious happens. Obviously, you know I mean? yeah. So <laughs> that's what happened to me is I woke up in a hospital. I really don't know what happened. I don't know. Uh, uh, they tell me it was bad, you know, but uh, they also tell me that, that my recovery is remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think really that the, just the thing of, how, of lots and lots of deadheads putting good energy into me while I was. Uh, uh, laid up really helped me come out of it. You know, I really, I really, I think that had a lot to do with it. I'm not a believer in that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I, uh, but I feel I have some evidential proof. You know what Obviously, I mean? That yeah. uh, healing vibes have something. I mean, the doctor said they'd never seen anybody as sick as me who wasn't dead. You know, so that I mean, if that's any indication, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, apparently I was real sick. Although I, I got to tell you, I didn't, didn't experience any pain or any discomfort really, apart mm -hmm. from the thing of just being wired, you know, yeah. and having uh, tubes and holes and all kinds of things in me, and uh, that's that's of course strange. But apart from that, it wasn't like uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't painful. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, I mean, what can I, what, what can you say about that? The point is that I, I survived it, and here I am. You know. Yeah. Well, that you know, you did. We, I guess you got, uh, you got hundreds and hundreds of cards and letters and stuff. Oh and man. Gifts and things. Some soulful stuff. 
Good get, stuff. Get anything that really kind of tweaked you, that really you really like? Well, I like the thing I got from uh, the Juvenile Hall in San Francisco. Oh, that yeah, that was a great letter. <laughs> that was great. It just said, uh, hey, Garcia, get well or we'll mug you. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Yeah, it was. I remember I showed you that letter and you said, hey, I've been there a lot. <laughs> sure. Yeah, Juvenile Hall is an old familiar friend. Were there any uh, like gifts or anything that you got that were? All kinds of things. I mean, mostly I got like uh, this kind of... Uh, you know, brotherly, sisterly, motherly, fatherly advice, you know, uh -huh. and that was all very heartfelt. And uh, I mean, it was just mostly just good wishes, you know, sorry to hear yours down and, uh, and you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Now you heard you've got uh, uh, black and red hospital gowns. <laughs> no, I didn't. I mean, maybe somebody, maybe, yeah, maybe they, they came there, but I never saw them. I mean, but there was so much stuff I haven't seen. The kids are still going through all this stuff. Yeah. And they, whenever something incredible turns up, they're like, hey, look at this. <laughs> um, is there anything that deadheads can do for you? Yeah, they can keep having fun. They can uh, just keep doing what they do. I mean, it, it, the whole thing is the deadheads have a sort of a sense of adventure. And it's tough to com come by adventure in America nowadays. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's a little uptight and everything like that. And people who are strong enough to seek adventure in this new lame America, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they already have what they need. They don't need anything. They don't need me to give them advice. They're yeah. doing okay. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. Is there anything that you feel deadheads can do to help out the Grateful Dead when they start touring? Yeah, I mean, they can, well, sure, there's all kinds of things, probably, but I, but I'm not, it's not my position to tell anybody what they should do, I mean, how to modify their behavior in some direction or another to benefit anybody, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's, that's not what I'm about, you know, I mean, I, I'm the very antithesis of that, hopefully, yeah. you know, is that everybody does what they want and I'll try and stay out of the way if I get in the way, you know. Well, Phil said that in response to this question, Phil said that he would like uh, deadheads to not bring hard drugs around the dead when they start playing again. How do you feel about that? I think drugs are really a personal thing. That anybody, everybody has the right to take them, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And in my world, everything is legal, you know, and everybody can do whatever they want. And I mean, I, I, my experience with drugs have mostly been positive, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at least in my own terms. But I wouldn't. But on the other hand, I wouldn't superimpose my life or values on anybody else and say this is going to be good for you. It may be a disaster. Right. But. In my own life, I've enjoyed every minute that I spent with drugs, you know, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the way I feel. But I also feel that that's in the nature of a personal decision, and I have no business talking about that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I'm not a cop. I can't. I don't, I'm not telling people what to do, ever. Mm -hmm. Well, have you... Uh, Man. Man. <laughs> <laughs> have you uh, changed your attitude about life in general? Your change your priorities? I don't remember what my attitude used to be, so I'm not really sure whether I've changed it or not. I mean, there's a lot of things. That I'm, like I say, I'm still a little mushy. There's things that I don't remember. Uh -huh. and uh, uh, But I don't remember what I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, so I don't care. You know? yeah, right. yeah, so it's, you know, it's one of those kind of experiences. I mean, it's like a Zen experience or a drug experience. You know, it's one of those things where something extreme happened to me, and my psyche... Uh, um, dealt with it and the way it dealt with it was to say hey, fuck it you know I mean whatever I don't remember I don't remember and who cares you know it's kind of like that so for me I never had any uh, I, I was I never felt that I was suicidal particularly mm -hmm. possibly reckless you know but not suicidal and so the thing of coming close to death as far as I'm concerned is one of those things that could happen to anybody at any time that's that's the thing that it brought home to me was that life is this delicate little thread and then you can just boom you can be gone in a minute so what the fuck you know as long as you're alive and happening that there's no reason why not, why you shouldn't do everything that you think you should do mm -hmm. you know and so as far as what I think I should do that's one of those things that keeps changing you know? I mean I, I have the same questions that everybody else has you know? right what why who you know of course you know. well um what do you think of gatherings such as this night of the living deadheads where deadheads get together when the dead aren't playing. Well, 
there's the experience of going to a Grateful Dead concert and, and have experience in the music in a sort of a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And then there's the thing of all of the stuff that is not music but has to do with the ambience and, and the people. And if you like the people and the ambience, I think it, the Night of the Living Dead has makes sense because that's the same people and the same sort of ambience. Right. You know, the only thing that's missing is the is live music, and uh, for some people that's the whole story. So I can see where they might not be interested in it, but for other people, the 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 totality counts. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand it, although it's, I you know, it's dealing with these kind of things is funny because there's power implied in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be directing this kind of stuff. In, or affecting it in any way. If it comes to life and develops some life of its own, great. But as far as actively encouraging it or discouraging it or doing anything like that, I really, I have to disqualify myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that, that, what, that covered that, right? Um, hey, Sidestepping is an art. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I, thank you. Yeah. Um, I've just asked you a whole lot of questions. Are there yeah. any questions that you have to ask that you might want to ask? Are you kidding? Wait a minute. Well, That's no. a question. <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah. I, uh, specifically, uh, what? You a, know? a question of deadheads. Uh, two uh, deadheads. Do two, yeah. two deadheads. No. Okay. Then. The, the world in general? Comments the on the world in general. No, I don't have, I don't have, I'm not in that kind of an attitude toward the world. How know, about the 49ers? <laughs> <laughs> They're looking good this year. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I have uh, one more question, and that is, do you have a message to the deadheads? Uh, and they're right out go there. Go for it. Yeah. Hey. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you. And we're looking forward to seeing you in December. Yeah. Did we fade out yet? Are we still going? <laughs> Are we gone yet? It doesn't fade out completely, David. It's gone. Okay. It like oh, it's coming out. back. Oh, you got it. It's, <laughs> it's coming <laughs> back. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jerry. Sure, man. A, a, a monument to sheer lunacy. <laughs> no, no. It's, there's some really, I mean, there's some extraordinary work up there. I wonder what it represents in terms of hours. Oh, hours. As a matter of fact, some of those take so long for them that they miss out on the deadlines. Yeah, gotcha. No. I swear. Yeah. I swear. No, there must be a few, yeah. Because some of them are extraordinary. I mean, okay. look at this. That's like, uh, like that. Uh... All of these things actually are tremendously, at least, time consuming. At the very least, they're time consuming. sort of retinal circus kinds of ones. Uh -huh. Very nice. Ooh, this is pretty. That's some good stuff. Yeah. Hey, there's another record that has a lot of work. Yeah, that's my favorite record of all records. That That's the only record I really feel like, okay, you want a record? Here's a fucking record. You know what I mean? <laughs> It, 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 it has like, it's just like a happy chorus, but like, you know, it's more like, you know, it looks like 
so hard. It was so thankless. That's actually a good point. Like, somebody for me, I think that's my question. 